Hi, my name's Tom and I'm talking about F1 Fantasy as per usual and we're in the build-up to Monaco at the moment so I'm going to have a look at who I think the best teams are. I've got sort of several builds I'm looking at. I'm going to just give you my general ideas of what I'm thinking at the moment just, you know, as usual. Um, we'll see who the best team is hopefully for Monaco. Um, before we get into that, a few nitty-gritty bits. If you're not subscribed, why not? If you're not in the Fantasy League, why not? There's a code in the description. And if you're not following me on Twitter, then why not? Because, you know, I tweet random random stuff about F1 Fantasy throughout the week when stuff comes into my head. So, yeah, follow me on Twitter. Uh, yeah, anyway, Monaco's coming up. So, who do we think the best team is? This is my team at the moment. You may already see that I've got Alfa Romeo in my team. You're thinking, Tom... Why? Why is Alfa Romeo on your team? It's because this, this the price changes are just like they're they're really just are kind of annoying to be honest. This year, I don't know what's happening. I don't know if there's a hacker or so, you know someone's making bot accounts. I don't know if it's the people behind the actual game that have just randomly changed the algorithm. And we're coming up with all sorts of different price increases, but you can see here Alfa Romeo have already gone up by 0.3. So I bought them in earlier today. Um, because I saw them going up, so I've already gained 0.1 for bringing them in, and I hate doing this, I really hate doing this, I've said it in a previous video, I hate making early subs, and I think it's kind of suboptimal, because it restricts what you can do um, for building your team, come you know, come the practice sessions when you know exactly who you, what you want to do, uh, but I think you have to be kind of adaptable, and this is this looks like it's the new normal for these price hikes to continue, like the Alfa Romeo's have gone up to 0.3, and it has slowed again, but We'll see if that picks up again through the week. See if I get any more value off that. I don't know if you guys are doing the same, but I think we might need to look being ta ta tactful about it. The reason I went for Alfa Romeo isn't just because their price is going up and oh, I want loads of money, but it's also because I think I can get to a very good team this week at the expense of already using a substitution. If I thought, if I really didn't have a clue what team I wanted and, you know, I think I need all three substitutions, then I wouldn't risk it. But I think I can get to, there's two teams in particular, which I think I can really get to. So I've risked bringing in Alfa Romero for the price changes. Um, I, I don't intend to, to keep them. Um, however, I, I did actually come up with a build, which actually looks kind of nice, on paper at least. It lets you get like all the best drivers in, basically. I mean, you could literally just like do that. Have Alfa Romero as your as your constructor, then this it lets you into, you know, having Verstappen and Leclerc, Perez, Sainz, literally got all four of the best drivers, or I say the best drivers, the best cars at the moment, at least. And you got the Bottas, the Bottas. That's his new name, the Bottas, um, who's on a streak, and I expect Alfa Romeo to be really strong around Monaco as well. However, the problem is, um, actually, I'm not going to go into it right now. I'm just going to say that this team, I worked out earlier, this team has an average points per race of, where are we, 160. So bear that in mind, 160 is the average points for this entire team. I'm looking at the other builds, I've got one, two, three, four other builds that I'm going to go through. The average um, um, points that these other teams are bringing in are 179, 173, 178, and 173. So when you look at this team, it looks great because you pack in five great drivers. But the actual average, because Alfa Romeo, let's have a quick look at the spreadsheet. Ooh, uh, spreadsheet, um, you can see Alfa Romeo only averaging 18 points per race. It's probably due to a few DNFs not helping and the fact that they don't really finish in the top four. Um, so the main constructor points are really, as you can see here in this column, coming from Red Bull, Mercedes and Ferrari. And bear in mind, Red Bull have got 61 points per race, and that's including the three DNFs. So Red Bull are looking really, 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 really strong at the moment. Um, quick sneak peek, I'm going to be looking at your Twitter questions uh, later on in the video, but I'm just going to go through the teams that I think are going to be good first. Um, so anyway... Uh, I don't I don't think I'm going to go with this Alfa Romeo build, but it's just there for the price at the moment. So we're going to bring in Ferrari. We'll have a look at the Ferraris. This, uh, we we bring in Lando Norris here as well. Because I think Lando Norris could be a good shout going into Monaco. I keep saying Lando Norris is going to be good. and Eventually he will be good. <laughs> um, now he is a good driver. He's outperforming Ricardo. Ricardo's having a real tough time pretty much the entire last year since he's been at McLaren. Um, he just doesn't seem to be getting the most out of that car. And Norris, Norris is. It's like the car is like molded around Norris and it just seems to be working for him a lot better even with his tonsillitis he drove pretty well around Spain and came up with a, a decent result in the end so yeah Norris is looking good um he did well last last year he got the podium in Monaco and yeah I think he could be a good shout and if we again I know I keep banging on about the spreadsheet and how he's performing but um if we look at the predicting quali qualifying positions if we go across to what happened in Spain again so in Spain he qualified in 11th and he was predicted 11th according to the hypothetical qualification so literally every single race Norris is always like spot on 
And the funny thing is, this is including, this hypothetical qualification is including um, the 20. If we go to Spain and scroll across the practice sessions, you see Lando Norris down here in FP2 was bottom of the pile with a completely rubbish time um, because of the damage to his car. So he didn't really have any running. So I've included that in the in the hypothetical. If we get rid of that P20, you can see he was P7, P7. So he was averaging P7. And he actually, I, I believe it was P7 that he got, or he got, he got into Q3 before his um, track, he got his, get my words out, he got his t a lap time deleted because of track limits by like literally a centimetre. So he was actually like looking around P that P7 mark potentially. And Ricardo ended up getting in P9. And I think Norris is, like I just said, better than Ricardo at the moment. So I, I'd, quite, I'd be completely unsurprised if Norris... Hadn't had his track, um, his tra I can't get this my words out, if he hadn't had his lap time deleted by track limits, then I'm pretty sure Norris would have matched up with his practice times yet again. So I think this is crucial going into Monaco, that we look closely at where Lando Norris is averaging. Um, I mean, yeah, we can see from the qualifying positions that some other people, for example, Fernando Alonso, I don't know what's going on there, minus 10 positions from where he's predicted. Some people were very difficult to predict, but Lando Norris is the one driver who week after week after week has proven to be predictable and I think obviously qualifying is absolutely crucial in Monaco and I think if we can safely predict where Lando is going to be it should tell us if he's a really good pick or not so I think Lando is definitely this is definitely a build I'm considering going into the weekend and this build I believe this averages 173 that's pretty decent um, as an average so yeah you get yeah I think I think it's gonna be good the only the only trouble with this build is it does go all in on Ferrari and you know Leclerc's record around Monaco is let's face it shocking um, he's had DNF after DNF or even you know DNS last year he didn't even start the race because of the damage um, from qualifying um, Carlos Sainz um, has proven pretty well done pretty well at this track in the past looking at his track history and he, again I believe he got a podium last year for Ferrari uh, Monaco so yeah signs the trouble is this year signs is a bit of a different driver to what we saw last year and he's really not performing as well as we would have expected um he's said himself he's just not comfortable in the car it's a bit just tri tricky for him to to drive to be honest and Leclerc's just sort of beating him all ends up with the exception of the DNF in Spain but so yeah, it's definitely um, a bit of a risky one going all in and, um, on one, you know, getting both drivers and the constructor all from the, you know, the same team because, you know, Monaco's dangerous. There is a potential chance of rain. Again, there's always rain hovering around on the horizon, it seems, at the moment. Um, but yeah, there is a, a little, small chance of rain. So it seems a little bit risky going all in on Ferrari, especially like uh, for the points I've just said. But this is definitely a team that I am considering. Um, we'll have a look at a couple other teams. I could also... Um, go with Red Bull and then we switch Norris all the way down to Kevin Magnussen this is another great option I think going into this week because it's kind of splits splits that risk that I've just discussed you get Bottas who like I said I expect him to be very strong around here he's on that streak he's he's definitely in my team 100% uh, Magnussen I also expect to be really strong around here he qualified well in his last race here in 2019 um, I expect the has to go well around this track. It's, it seems pretty good around um, around the slow corners, from what I can see. And you know, there's plenty of slow corners going around Monaco. And I think the has is going to be pretty well set up for. And I think the risk of Magnussen, as we saw in Spain, is when he qualifies well and he drops back, he loses those points. But in Monaco, unless you like crash basically or have some sort of mechanical fault, you know, reliability issues then I anticipate Magnussen to qualify well and probably finish well as well. So I think Magnussen as the super budget option is going to be a great, great option going into Monaco. So I really like the look of this team as well. Those are the two teams I'm really looking at. There is another build as well. A couple of builds I'm going to look at. Um, this, let me just quickly, where are we? Perez, Sainz, yeah, that's the one I've just done. So I'm just looking at my other screen just because I've got so many builds going on here. Um, one of the other builds I could include is, uh, I always called him Lando... Lando Lando Russell, I don't know what has going on in my head because I was thinking about Lando a minute ago. George Russell, sort of, you know, talk of the town at the moment. Um, obviously, we kind of Red Bull this build. We're going to bring in the Ferraris. And then this Carlos Sainz becomes K-Mag. And, yeah, that's a team like that. So you could have, you could also have it sort of incorporate Russell into your plans as well. If you, you know, he's, again, if we throw it back to the spreadsheet, he is bringing some good value in. Sorry, bear with me. Here we go. So Russell here, points per race. I think this column is really important. It kind of negates, you know, you can forget about how much the driver costs. It's purely, this column is purely about how many points they're bringing in the race. 
And Russell's bringing in 32 points per race, which is the third best, well, the third best record on uh, out of everyone on the grid, basically. So yes, Russell is costing 24 million, but um, he is bringing in those points. The only you know, I think trouble is, yes, the fact is he is 24 million, and that's considerably more than the likes of Sainz, Perez, and Leclerc, who are in that kind of 17 to 18, roughly million uh, sort of price bracket. So for similar sort of points that they're bringing in, Russell's just costs that extra, which is why he hasn't found his way into my team. But um, I think he's still potentially a great option. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so yeah, that's definitely a team you can pick. Um, I think there was one more team I wanted to look at briefly, and that is another one including Verstappen. Because again, along with Russell, he's going to talk of the town as well. And we can bring in the clerk. Okay, this is the one I actually can't afford myself, but I was thinking... Um, it could be, is this the right one? Bottas, Max and Ferrari, Leclerc, Max and Sainz. Yeah, I'd, yeah. this one seems a bit pricey. I don't know why I actually looked at this one earlier, but you know, it's, it's probably way, it's probably out of everyone's price range to be honest, but this is actually a potentially quite a good one because you get the two, again, the two best drivers at the moment, the t title contenders. Um, and this team is averaging 173, 173 points per race. So yeah, it's not, again, not bad. They're all kind of similar. So it's, I think it's more about who you think is going to do well on that weekend, and we need the practice sessions to really to really pay close attention to that. Um, but yeah, I think, like I said previously, that I think the best team for me is probably what I had a minute ago, which is bringing back Perez, um, potentially potentially bringing back the Red Bulls as well. Um, something something on these lines. If I want to kind of split the difference a bit, I quite like this team. Um, I do anticipate, like I said, the Ferraris to do well. So you could, you know, if the Ferraris are prove doing like. If they prove like they're doing really well in practice, you can just go like this. Um, you could even then upgrade, like I said, Magnussen into Lando Norris. So it kind of depends which way you want to go, who's looking stronger in practice and that. Um, there is also some argument to be sat to be had about Mercedes. They're on this race streak. No one else is on any streaks down here in the constructors. So I think a lot of people are going to be um, keen on potentially bringing in Mercedes. And if they suddenly look really strong and look like they're going to beat Red Bull and Ferrari then go for it by on I don't think they will to be honest and if we look at their points per race that they're bringing in on average Mercedes and bear in mind that they're finishing every race they're, they're not like DNFing or anything like the other two teams have been um, Mercedes are still only bringing in 46 points per race so if you add in the extra 10 points from hitting that race streak they're on 56 points so the Mercedes with the race streak are still kind of kind of on par basically that doesn't push them ahead of Red Bull and Ferrari um, so <clears throat> excuse me so I think I still, I still prefer the Red Bulls or the Ferraris over the Mercedes, despite the fact that the Mercedes are on a race streak. I think if you want anyone from Mercedes, it's still George Russell. I think he's still the go-to guy. Hamilton showed some really good race pace in Spain coming back through the field, but Hamilton's just so expensive, and I don't think you can justify If you're going to spend that much money on someone, then it's got to be Verstappen for me. Um, and that pretty much sums it up. I'm going to have a look through some Twitter questions now, because you know if you're interested in this, follow me on Twitter, and you can ask me some questions when I put the tweet out. I'll start doing this like for each race. So yeah, let's have a look at some Twitter questions. I've I've just kind of gone over this this here. I'd like to hear your thoughts on Russell in the video. I kind of just kind of just discussed that, I guess. Um, yeah, I think like to summarize, basically, I think he's a great option. He's he's racking in the points, but you have to compromise your team um, because again, if we look at the the prices here, two seconds. Um, you know, look at Russell twenty three point nine. He's bringing in 32 points per race. And then you look at Leclerc, Perez, and Sainz. Maybe not Sainz so much, but Leclerc and Perez are also bringing in around the 30 to 37 points mark. So they're all kind of even, but Russell costs that extra chunk, like an extra 5 million. So that makes you compromise on your budget options. Maybe you have to go down to the likes of Albon and Magnussen or whoever. I don't know. Maybe it's maybe just, just too much of a compromise. I don't know. Or it, it maybe if you... You could compromise and bring in Ferrari as your construction instead of Red Bull, but then if Red Bulls are looking particularly strong, then do you really are you that desperate for Russell on your team? And so far this season, I haven't been that desperate for Russell on my team, but he is definitely under consideration going forward. I just don't think he's in my team for for Monaco, but we'll see. Are there possible uh, builds that include Verstappen? I have actually gone over that a little bit already. I've showed you your team with Verstappen in earlier. There are definite builds with Verstappen. I think he is a fantastic option. When he finishes the race, as we all know, he basically wins it or he comes second. He's going to he's gonna be up there every time. He's just he's an excellent driver. He's in a brilliant car. Um, and I think, yeah, I think if you can get Verstappen in the team, I think, but I think the trouble is Verstappen, like I say, because of his price, another reason why I think in improving your budget and what I've done bringing in Alfa Romeo trying to adapt to the price change situation at the moment 
excuse me, um, I think trying to increase your budget rather than trying to pack him in now and compromise your team, I think build, building your budget and maybe in a few races we can get for snapping in our team without too much trouble. And I think I think that could be a good way to, to go forward. Red Bull versus Ferrari, I've kind of already touched on that as well a little bit. Um, so Red Bull and Ferrari, I think, are very evenly matched. Again, if we throw it back to the spreadsheet, we can see um, points per race on average, Ferrari bringing in 50, Red Bull 61. So they're pretty even, kind of um, similar sort of ratio um, of the points they're bringing into the, the value. So 25 into 32 is a similar sort of ratio of 50 into 61. Um, so I think it's very much track dependent and and who else you want to squeeze in your team. Like if you if you want to try and pack in someone like Verstappen, then obviously Ferrari would be a better um, constructor because it's sort of, you know, they're 7 million cheaper and that enables you to maybe get Verstappen in at the, at the cost of someone else. Uh, can Mercedes out qualify and break into the top four? Sure, they can on a good day. Maybe that will happen. But at the moment, they're still behind. If we look at all the data and everything that's coming out of it, they're still a few temps behind. You know, they were like a, a second behind and now they're like half a second behind. So they're still behind the Red Bulls and Ferraris. But on a good day, if you know, maybe if there's a touch of rain and, you know, we've seen what Russell can do in the rain, for example, um, in qualifying. We saw what happened in Russia. He qualified really well in the rain. We saw what happened in Spa. He qualified really well in the rain. So, yeah, Russell, you know, if it is going to pour a rain in Monaco, maybe Russell is a good pick for, for Monaco. But I think in general, I'd still absolutely stick into the Red Bulls and Ferraris until Mercedes can prove to be a bit stronger. Okay, next question is interested to hear your thoughts on K Mag. Is he just getting unlucky? Is he still some of the best value? Yeah, I think he is some of the best value. And 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 no, I don't think I don't think I want Schumacher over K Mag at the moment. Um let's go back to the spreadsheet again briefly. So points per race, Schumacher is currently bringing in four points per race, Magnuson eleven. Um in general, Magnuson is out qualifying um Schumacher and race racing kind of even at the moment, split three and three. Um but Magnuson you can see the points per the value, one point eight points per million per race um i, I like magnuson he's just he's just a he's, he's a strong driver and i think i still think he's going to be a really good option going forward and he, he's super cheap as well 6.1 so i don't know i think <clears throat> he had such a brilliant start to the season in bahrain because of the double uh, red bull like bnf bnf oh my god that's the british national formula i've got too much medicine stuff in my brain from work um <laughs> uh the dnf from um the bit that the red bulls in bahrain um, so yeah, I think K-Mag is, is still the best option. And you've also asked who the best budget pick for Monaco of the track, surely not very much. Yeah, honestly, I think Albon is, is no, is a big no-no for this week. I could be completely wrong, you know, it's purely my opinion in this video. That's what, all I'm saying is I really don't think Albon is going to be great this week because the Williams is a slug um, in any way apart from a straight line. Like, it's looking good in a straight line, but Monaco is anything but a straight line and I really don't want Albon on my team this week. So yeah, K Mag's the most obvious, blindingly obvious option for me. So yeah, I think K Mag uh, definitely still a good option. Thoughts on Ocon? Uh, is he worth Alpine? Um, worth it due to Alpine's struggles in comparison to Alonso? Yeah, I think Ocon's Ocon's a really great shout. The trouble with Ocon is his price. So in, in Alpine's in general, if we look at their prices, twelve point four and Alonso twelve point three, it's kind of an awkward price when we're trying to. If we go back to the teams, we're trying to squeeze in these team, um, all these like best the best value drivers you know if we um stick Perez back in here if we're trying to squeeze in like the likes of the clerk and Perez and signs and Russell Ferrari Red Bull constructor there's they're all really expensive and they they force us to move to the sub 10 million sort of bracket with like Bottas and K-Mag and Albon that's why those guys are super popular because if we actually look at the points per race and everything Ocon 19 points per race is doing just as well as Bottas but he's a slightly awkward price bra uh, price point Bottas at 9.5 million Ocon at three million more than that unless the alpines are looking particularly strong one weekend they just don't quite fit the team structures that i am personally looking at maybe you can find your own team structure where ocon may fit well in and we can see look look at the the how many times he's beat his teammate in fact that's 100 percent record in the race of ocon beating alonso and no no other driver has done that as long as i've filled in my spreadsheet correctly but yeah um, Ocon, I honestly think he's a great option. And he's also getting, you can see he's getting his points here for overtakes. We can put that to Alonso, who's on minus 22 points for positions lost and gained. So he's he's losing a lot of points, Alonso, because, well, you know, he's DNF'd and whatnot. Ocon's bringing in lots of points for those points, um, for those positions gained. So that's, that's a huge, huge gap in, in terms of that. For the You know, they're in the same car, and Ocon's doing a lot better job of getting those overtakes done. So... 
yeah, I think Ocon's a, a really a great option, but like I say, awkward price point makes it kind of a bit eh. Um, yeah, that's kind of my thoughts on that. Um, so yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Pretty much it, really. Quite probably quite a long video. I feel like I've been talking for just about ever. Um, but yeah, if you have enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Like I said already, and join join the the league. Um, it's really great to see lots of people in there. I think we're almost up to 100 people last time I checked, so that's great. And make sure you follow me on Twitter. Ask me some questions on Twitter, and we'll see what, what I can sort of off the cuff answer them as I go through these videos. So yeah, thanks very much everyone for watching. Um, yeah, and well, I'll catch you for the final thoughts video on Friday evening. Um, once we've had a couple of practice sessions under the belt, and we'll see, you know, who's looking strong. We can have a look at look at who, you know, if my thoughts have changed at all. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Thanks everyone for watching, and I'll catch you on Friday. Bye bye.